Hi, welcome to the podcast. Long time no see. Um, yeah, I have been a very limited on free time to do podcasts recently because I have been working really hard on the advent calendars, which has taken up so much of my time and um, headspace. Um, so yeah, I'm basically just getting around um, to doing this now after like a month or maybe longer, I'm not even sure. Um, <clears throat> things here, the weather has been so wet the last like July and August, super, super wet, apart from just um, a few days, which I think you'll see clips of before and after. You maybe have already seen the clips. Um, and uh, we have just gone into, the whole of Northern Ireland has gone into a kind of a <clears throat> semi-lockdown where you can't visit anyone else in anyone else's home. So yeah, that's a bit sad, but yeah. So that was just announced yesterday. And um, yeah, so the advents I have been, yeah, busy dyeing them and labeling them and packing them and ordering the supplies for them. It's just been so crazy. I have had no mental bandwidth to give to anything else, including knitting, but I do have a few things I want to show you uh, nonetheless. So yeah, I'll just get stuck into it here. Oh, I'm Emma, by the way, if you don't know that already, and uh, I do natural dye and, and interest in sort of fibres, local shibi wool and that sort of thing. So um, anyway, yeah, I'll just get to the knitting because no one's interested in listening to me ramble on about my social media things. <laughs> so, oh, dropped a few stitches already. That's not very good. So I, I think I maybe said in the last episode that um, I had a skein of the Whistle Bear's Cuthbert sock yarn and that I want to cast something on with it. So I cast on a... So this is as far as my mental bad bandwidth of uh, what I had left. This is what I could give to the knitting. So um, it's a three by one rib sock. Um, I'm not using a pattern as such, but it's just kind of a pattern I use. Like it's just kind of one, like a really standard pattern. Now, um, the Whistle Bear Cuthbert Sock yarn, this is duck egg colour I think, or duck something. Um, this is um, her own mohair and Wensley deal. And it's a uh, worsted spun and it's sport weight 300 metres per 100 grams. And I bought this a few years ago as part of my kind of no nylon sock experiment. Um, I have heard a lot of people talking about mohair for a while now as nature's nylon and I just want to see, I kind of had a few reservations about mohair just because in my head I'm like oh well it would felt but to be honest that's not really the worst thing that can happen with knitted socks, um, it's worse if it goes into holes. So yeah, so basically I want to try this, it's a really luscious beautiful lustrous yarn um, because it's sport weight, it makes quite a nice thick fabric. Now I, as many of you know, I have ex experimented knitting on 1.5 millimetre needles, 1.75, 2. And with my own natural sock yarn, I've come to the conclusion that 1.75 is best. I'm quite a loose knitter and I was advised by LB hand knits that 35 stitches per 10 centimeters is kind of the best gauge to go for. Um, I haven't really checked my gauge on this one, but I am using a, oh, my husband's laughing, he's so loud. 2.25 millimeter needles, cast on 60 stitches um, because it's sport weight, obviously. So, um but yeah it feels like a really thick nice fabric and i think this will be good so yeah i'm pretty much at the heel but i haven't started it yet because i had no brain space so this is where i'm at but because it's sport weight it knitted up pretty fast which is actually lovely a nice change from knitting on like 1.75 millimeter needles 
like the change you notice between 1.75 and 2.25 is absolutely massive like this just knitted up like so quickly and suddenly I was at the heel and I didn't have any brain space to do the heel so this is one work in progress he's so loud he talks so loud um <laughs> Okay, so the next thing is my Kumi cardigan by Vanessa Pelisa. I have done the collar and I have yet to steak it. This will be my first steak. I think I'm going to use the sewing machine. Um, you can see where I didn't all earning it skeins. <laughs> but um, anyway, so the story with this is I knitted it, loved the pattern, tried it on. And then I was like, oh, oh, I don't know if I'll wear this. I just, yeah, I explained in the last episode that I think I prefer woolen spun yarn for garments um, or at least a, a tighter kind of gauge that's sort of fairly loose. Um, and it's knitted in my natural sock DK. So what I did was I... Yeah, in the last episode I said I might ask my mother-in-law if she uh, would be interested in getting this for Christmas and she tried it on the other day and she really really liked it and it actually fitted her better than it fitted me. Perfect in the length, colour looked really good and she really liked the colour and she really liked the design as well. So I'm feeling really happy now that it's just gonna go to the perfect home and I know she's gonna love it. Um, so yeah, so basically my aim for this is to get the steak done before Christmas. It's, um, yeah, I think I'll be able to do it. It will be good motivation knowing that I have to give it to her. So then I will make an effort to get it done because it was languishing in my um, knitting, uh, in my knitting area. Um, because I wasn't sure whether I should rip it out or whether I should continue with it or what. But anyway, I really like the pattern and this is maybe something that I would knit up on one of my other yarns with a bit more halo and a bit more wooliness. Um, but yeah, so this is this. So that'll be going to my mother-in-law for Christmas. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. It's really, really super soft as well, that yarn. It's Blue Face Lester and Cheviot. And it's worsted spun and it's really, um, it's really soft against the skin. So, next thing, next work in progress, if you could call it that, is I have been doing some spinning. And, um, I started spinning at the same time as I started knitting, which was when I was at uni, which was like nine, ten years ago. What? So crazy actually to think that. And I got the spinning wheel going again. It had just kind of been set aside for a few years while I was working on Woolly Mammoth and again, no extra time or headspace to um, spin. And it's something I really enjoy. So I just, the feeling came upon me and I decided now's the time to start spinning again. And I did. Last year when I was in holidays, I got some beautiful fibre from the, the, he's so loud, honestly. I hope you can hear that. Um, from a little shop in Cumbria called The Wool barn the wool no not the wool barn the wool shed and the fiber was by ellie langley and i think she's i think this was swale deal wensley deal and gotland fiber blend it together i thought i had enough for a sweater quantity of this but i don't think i do i also i think i've got about 400 grams of it plus i've got a bag or two bags of Hebridean so I've maybe got like 100 grams of that as well so I was thinking I might come up with some sort of stripes or colour work or something just to like make it enough for like a sweater one day or I might get white and then I would have 
white, like some like blue face lesser plus this plus the Hebridean could be really cool together. I could maybe do like a a fair isle kind of thing. I don't know. I'll just be making it up. So could look like it could look terrible, but who knows? Um. So so far, I've only spun up two hundred grams. This probably took me four evenings or roundabout. Um. And yeah, I want to design my own sweater for this. So that is that. Um, I also took a little trip to a shop near me. Um, now and again I go to it and it happened to be open so I just thought oh, we'll pop in. I was passing. It's a little shop called Snip in Ballycastle and uh, the lovely lady there had some of this beautiful fabric for sale and it's like a sample. See it's like different columns of different colours. Um, and she bought this from a Yorkshire mill, I think. And uh, she had it for sale. I think there was almost three metres of it. And it was 30 or 40 pounds. So I was like, this is so beautiful. I can definitely make something from this. <coughs> so I asked on Instagram and I um, just did some research of my own. And eventually I came to the conclusion that I would maybe do a merchant and mills pattern. The trapeze dress. Um, and this one comes with three options to do. Well, you can do a longer dress or you can do a shorter dress. Um, it's with buttons up the back and it's also, it can be sleeveless, short sleeve or long sleeve. I think I'll probably do either no sleeves or short sleeves and then wear like a polo neck below as a nice winter dress. So you can kind of see how this would work quite well, quite nicely together. Um, I got some buttons from the textile garden because this is how it looks on the back with buttons the whole way up the back. And my aim is to have this done by Christmas. I don't know, I don't know what the chances of that really are. Um, yeah, I need to figure out I need to figure out how long this is going to take. I have experience with Merchant and Mills patterns before. I, I um, sewed one of their patterns. It was um, a dress. It had like a kind of, it looked like a big kind of bib front on it. And the instructions I felt for that were very clear. And uh, the pattern was very clear. And it needs to be because I'm not, I'm not really a great sewer. But I think I can manage this. There can't be that much to it, is there? We'll see. I'll report back on this after. Um. So yes, this is, it might even be something that I do over like the holidays or something like that and just kind of work away at it. But I would love to have it done for this year. Um, another dream making for me, I have had in my head the last maybe month or so that I would maybe like to knit a Fair Isles or some sort of all over colour work uh, cardigan. Um, I had initially thought of Marie Wallen, um, but the thing is I don't have any of her books. And when I looked on the pattern page on Ravelry, it was, the information there was extremely minimal. <laughs> um, specifically, I wanted to know how much ease the patterns had because in, um, I, I generally like a bit more ease and um, especially with cardigans, I don't like a cardigan that's too tight. Um, and I couldn't find that information there so and also it's a lot of colours and I'm just not sure I am up to that standard yet um although her designs are really beautiful um and then I had thought of the Marit cardigan which is where I'm kind of at, at the moment um it was in oh who's it by the Marit cardigan I can't remember now but um, it's M-A-R-I-T, Marit Cardigan. And I was thinking 
Initially I had thought to knit it in my BFL Massim 4 ply, um, which is actually worsted spun and then I thought oh maybe I'll wait and um, wait until some of my limited edition yarns come back um, because they are woolen spun mostly although I've sent a batch down to Jess uh, down in County Cavan and she is semi worsted so it'll probably be pretty similar to my other yarns um so yeah so i have thought of doing this marat cardigan in just like monochrome like black white and gray i thought oh that could be really cool it would be good for the steaking because it's got a steak up the middle of it and i have lots of interest in limited edition yarns coming up and it's something that i really enjoy knitting with and it's going to be like a quite a long-term project between the swatching and getting the size right and picking the right yarns with the right contrast. I just think, yeah, this needs to be something really special and it's probably gonna take me like six months at least, not including the swatching. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait for some of those limited edition yarns to come back and I'll swatch with those and see how it looks. So one limited edition yarn that I had in mind to potentially use was um, my Jacobs 4-ply which I had last year, I think it was maybe last December, January and um, it's from a little um, farm out in Slat which is near Ballymena and um, I took it off last year out of that batch and knit it. This is it here, by the way. It's uh, two fold, which means there's two strands folded together to make this four ply yarn, which is finger and weight. Hope I'm not confusing you all between all my different terminologies. Um, this was the, uh, the label for it last year. I don't know, you might remember it. So um, yeah, this will be coming to the shop again in October. So with what I took from last year's batch of the Jacobs, I knitted my Skeel Grassware by LB Hand Knits. Um, this is, I think it's probably my favorite sweater. This is maybe my second favorite one, my Radari. This one is just, I feel like it suits the yarn really well. I love the combination of the nice rustic yarn, the nice farm yarn and the lace. Um, it fits me really well. I love the A-line shape. The length of the sleeves is perfect. It's just really practical. It goes with so many things. It's warm, it's light, it's, it's brilliant. Um, it's hardly bald at all. I'm really, really, really impressed with it. So I'm getting more of it in October. So I'm thinking maybe that will be like, maybe the main color. Um, I could also potentially use um, my Dorset base undyed, which is also hopefully coming in October, although I'm running out of time very, very quickly. <laughs> um, this is very, I'm trying to find the, sorry oh here it is I'm trying to find the label for it this will hopefully also be coming in october at least some of it will be there's i have quite a bit of it and this is um a yarn the where the fiber comes from where i grew up and um, it's just outside balamina and it's uh it's basically a couple of fields down from where i grew up and um I just wanted to have something that was really, really close to home and yeah, it makes it kind of special for me. So it's 100% Dorset wool and it um, feels really nice. I am super excited to have it in the shop. I'll tell you a bit about this, this here. So um, this, uh, this label was a photograph that my granddad took out um, out in a field um, that um, that looks out kind of from the kitchen window 
and the tree's not there anymore. So it's kind of like a very special label. I think the photograph was probably taken on a box brownie in the like the 1960s, 70s. And basically that is where this fibre comes from. I've been down to visit the sheep quite a bit, quite a number of times. I've seen them being shorn. I've just, um, yeah, went to see them in the field and had a chat with um, Graham who owns them. And he has such a passion for the Dorset breed. He's really really into really into them and it's really it's really cool to chat to someone who's like really really into it he he's retired and he kind of does it as a hobby and um he really really enjoys it so yeah this feels like a really special yarn to me because it comes from my home place and um i'm trying to make everything as traceable as possible and yeah that also feels really important to me so I'm that's why I'm getting into doing more limited edition and more undyed yarns and yarns where I can tell you exactly um, where the sheep are from and who the farmer is and I can show you photos of the sheep and I can show you videos and I can visit them um, and yeah so that is kind of where I can see this going more because I feel like that's really my passion area. Although I love natural dyeing, I think that's going to start taking a slightly different route for me in the next year or two, um, because I want to start growing more dye stuff as uh, in the garden, as my garden develops. It's still ongoing. We're hoping to get a greenhouse and we're hoping to start growing more dye stuff. And at the same time, there'll be all the limited edition and naturally coloured fibres um, in the shop alongside the naturally dyed stuff. So, yeah, so that is um, that is where I'm going in general. So, yes, all of that is to say I'm thinking of using <laughs> this and this and a mid grey in a Marit cardigan. Well, right now this is just an idea, but... I'll wait for a while and see if the idea sticks and if it sticks I'll go for it but there'll be a lot of swatching involved first so we'll see about that so yeah um I think by the end of the year by December I should have actually quite a few more limited edition bases than just these two but I won't tell you just yet what they are but you can guess below if you want to and I'll see if anybody's right. There's quite a few, so there's like quite a high chance that you will um, guess one. Someone will guess one. And, um, but yeah, should be really fun. And I love exploring like different fibers from different places. And if it's the same fiber, but from a different place, how does it feel? Is it the same? Is it different? Is, you know, yeah. So that's my passion area. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go now and um, I'm going to film a little bit of footage to bit at the beginning and the end and I hope you enjoyed this kind of short episode but just a little check in um, just to say hello and show you what I'm up to and that I'm still here and um, I'll chat to you next time.